Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. First, I want to thank you for watching my videos. I greatly appreciate it. If you could give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, especially if you found this helpful. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Do check below in the description box for more information about any products that I use, as well as my social media connectors, including my Facebook group, the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. I hope you'll come join us there. Hey, and if you're watching this video and you want to get through it quick, you can always hit the little gear if you're on a computer or go up to the top and hit the three dots and change the speed to two times the speed. All right, so I have an abundance of book pages. As a junk journal artist, I like to pick up various types of books. And I just think of it as another piece of art that I can use in my artwork. I like a scrapbook paper or paint. It's another tool. It's another item or element that I can use. So in the case of what I have out here in front of me, I have a Bible encyclopedia that I picked up. This is a large family Bible. This is a smaller, older, I think it was just the new uh testament bible and then i have a dictionary page i like the different sizes of fonts and whatnot and again to me book pages are just another art form i do not hold a piece of paper or a book sacred i may have the words of the lord sacred in my heart but i don't worship a book i don't you know love a book in that matter i think it's okay to use it as art and what I thought we would do today is make these into maybe what I'd call a junk journal card. And we're going to spray the pages to change the color. So we're going to start with this first one, which is the encyclopedia. And I've got four colors of Tattered Angels. If you don't have Tattered Angels, you could do things like coffee dye and tea dye. You can use a Distress ink pad and go right onto your page. So don't feel that you have to have Tattered Angels. I just want to show another way to use Tattered Angels. So in this case, I have So Bronze. It is from the So Artsy Tattered Angels kit. And by the way, y'all be on the lookout for some Black Friday deals that I'll be sharing with y'all. And and you can buy the whole kit. It's six colors in this kit, and this is one of them, so bronze. I like this color because it is a bronze color, and I'm just going to spray all over. If I want it to be darker, spray it more, and then I will use my heat tool if I'm in a hurry to dry that. So on the magic of video, I get to use the heat tool and speed through it. I did use my finger to kind of smear the paint just a little bit. It's not completely dry. It's a little damp, but we're going to paint some more papers and I want to show you each color. So there is the So Bronze and we'll let this dry a little bit longer and let's do the next color. So I've got the Bible page and I'll look at it sometimes and see, do I want one page over the other? And I think, I think we'll do this one. We'll do this side. This time I have craft tattered angels. And by the way, if your tattered angels are ever clogged, before you start really pumping away and spraying them, wipe away, let me get a rag, wipe away that nozzle. And then I take some rubbing alcohol and spray it in there. And then I'll rub this a little bit. And usually on these ones that have a lot of mica in them, if you do that periodically, it'll keep them from clogging up. Another key thing is to make sure you shake the tattered angels so that all that mica gets up into the liquid. I want this one to be a little bit darker, so I'm putting a lot of extra of the craft on here. All right, so I'm going to heat dry this, and then we'll move on to the next color. All right, so this one isn't completely dry. There's a couple of darker areas, but I love the gold shimmer that's in the craft and how it just gives it that older vintage look. And of course, we're going to be cutting this up, so don't worry about if it's not perfectly saturated. I like that variation. All right, next color. This time I have the Punked Brass. This is from the Punked Out Steam 2 Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist Kit. And it's got a brassy color to it. I really like it. All right, we'll dry this the same fashion. So there is the punked brass. And I like the color of this way it shimmers. And I like the way it kind of pulled. You probably can't see it. It's kind of veiny looking. 
in there. Some people ask me why tattered angels over coffee dyeing and tea dyeing. I really don't like taking the whole afternoon to coffee and tea dye. Now I have done some small batches where I just spray the coffee or tea onto a piece of paper, much like I'm doing with the tattered angels and dry them one at a time as I want them. Uh, and, but you also have to go ahead and mix up the coffee. It's got to be hot water so it dyes better. So I don't know. I, this is one of my favorite ways because I love that I can choose the color in each page if I want to, and I don't have to stick with just the coffee dyed or just the tea cod dyed. So this is Out to Sea Deck. It's a darker brown. I don't want to say this is a golden mica in it, but it's a much darker color. It's like a dark coffee, almost espresso. So I want it to be darker. This is on the dictionary page. So I want to use this kind of as a more of a background color. Now I had some puddling there and what I did before, let me grab another one. I uh, saw that puddling and I took a craft piece of cardstock and I just kind of picked up that ink just a little bit. It also gives it a unique texture to your paper. So I'll do that sometimes just to give this some interesting color. All right, we'll dry this and then I'm going to clear off the table once this is dry. I'll show you the print and then I'll clear off the table and then uh, we'll make some journal cards or at least one. This one is a lot darker and I like that the little puddles, you know, we may not see it because I may only use a small portion of it, but it'll just look really vintage on here. All right. So give me a moment and we will set up for making some cards. I've rearranged and got a few things ready here. I've got a rubber stamp from Beeline Designs. This is one that I offer in my shop. I'm the only online store that carries Beeline Designs and this is called I believe it's called small letter. I think that's right. Again, I'll have the official name in the description box. And if I'm smart when I'm editing, it might say it on the screen. <laughs> I'm going to take the first page that we made today and I want to ink up the small letter with black archival. I did re-ink my ink pad. I do recommend that you buy the re-inkers. And I'm just going to stamp it over the text going in the opposite direction or crosswise to it. And I'll stand up to push really hard. It's a big stamp. I probably didn't get all of it because I have it in the camera view more than for my convenience. So that's good. I just want it to kind of obscure a little bit. It may be hard for y'all to see it on this light, but there's just a faint lettering over the top of the other. I want to go ahead and trim this. I've got a card base and this is five by six. Just, just something that I had already in my stash and I'm going to use that as the base. So I want to trim out where I stamped. Now you could also tear it if you want, but that should have a nice little mat to that piece. So I like that so far. Let me get a different stamp. Let's do the really dark page. So this is the really dark page that we made and I'm going to use the Paris correspondence. I think that's right. If you type in Paris, it should come right up. But again, the link will be in the description box below. This time I'm just going to stamp it a couple of times put a scrap of paper under here. So if I stamp off the page, I didn't really get this edge. So just so that when I have a scrap, it has a little bit of something on there. I'll just go ahead and stamp it some more. All right. I think I want to trim this down. So let's see, maybe let's trim off where there's not any text and I'm saving all these pieces. I've got a little tray that I'm putting them in about three and a quarter inches. And I think I want to trim off. I'll leave a little bit of that text at the bottom that didn't have. And again, I'll save that scrap. And I think I want a, let's do a two inch pseudo rectangle. So I got a little rectangle here. So if we kind of layer this up, we're starting to see some differences in colors. I kind of like that. Um, what else? Oh, I've got, up this page 
that's the Bible page. And I think I've got a different, this is another Paris stamp. I should have left the sheet out. So the first one was called French Script. And this one is called French Correspondence. See, I, that's why I put them on there, but I left it over there. So I think I want to stamp this with the French Correspondence because we already used the script. I'll just stamp it again off the page just so I have a, a nice texture crosswise. I think I'll do a little bit more. Heck, I could do the whole sheet. Okay, I like that. I'm going to set this aside for just a moment because I need to do another step first, but I still want to do these backgrounds <laughs> this time. Oh, I know what I want to use. So this time I have the alphabet. I can't remember the name of it, but it's the only one that's a stamp like this. It's like a script alphabet. I really like the way this looks. All right, so we're going to just stamp it kind of off and go up the page here. That looks cool. I'm going to do the whole thing. So again, I have it as a scrap all ready to go. I have here, what did I do with it? This was the piece that I sprayed earlier with Tattered Angel. Not. I mopped up with it earlier on a piece of craft cardstock. And I've got the large pen nib. I'm going to ink this up. And I'm going to stamp it. Let's see how. Oh, yeah, it'll fit this way. So I'm just going to stamp it across. And then I'm going to fussy cut this out. So I'm just going to grab my Fiskars and fussy cut this out. I found that if I keep my scissors steady and just rotate the paper, I get a more precise cut. So I just trimmed that all the way out. Let's put some distress inks around the edges. I've got walnut stain. Okay, I like that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to mat it with this piece. So what I'm going to do is just cut a piece big enough to frame that. And I'm trying to decide, do I want it to have a mix of the text? I think I want to trim off. So I'm just going to trim off a little strip. All right. So now if I look at this, it's one and a half, one and a quarter. One and a quarter would be good. Yeah. I could probably do less, but let's do one and a quarter. All right. Three, three and three fourths. And again, I'm making scraps that I'll save. We'll, we'll do something else with them. I may do another video just using the scraps just as they are. All right. So I like that. So that's going to go on my card here. And I think what I want to do next is pick up this piece. Wait, is that the piece I want? Yeah, I think it is. So I think I've got this fleur de lis stamp that I thought would be a good focal point. And I was kind of messing around. I made one earlier. So if I do about a two. One, one and three, four, so not quite two inches. I'm going to trim off the excess. And let's do a one and three fourths long of a strip. I think that's what I wanted. And now I need to figure out what's the other direction. So, because it's a little bit bigger. So let's do three or two inches. Yeah, two inches. So I'm just going to trim off again. Oh, I'm not even on camera. Sorry, y'all. I forget that sometimes I don't get my cutting board all the way up. So I think two inches. Yeah, that works. Two by a inch and a three fourths. All right, so I like that. So we're going to put that on top of there. Let's go ahead and stamp that. Oh, it's funny. I cut off this piece and I ended up using it. All right. I used the, I cut the wrong piece. Y'all, I'm losing my mind. I thought it was wrong. This is what I want. Because I wanted the contrast with that gold. All right. So I, I got it figured out. Let's do it this way. I'm going to put it right in the center. 
Okay, I'm liking that so far. I think this needs a frame. So what if we framed it with a little artist trading card piece that I have laying here? So I'm going to trim this down. So if I remember, so if I go two and a quarter, that'd be a nice little border. Two and a quarter would make a nice border. Okay, I like that. All right, so that's going to go here. I've got this little piece. Is it big enough? Not quite, but I've got this piece. And I think, I think I need to change this piece. It's, it's too dark. Well, maybe y'all can see it better. It, it looks too dark to me. I don't think I want this whole piece here. We need something going this way. And I think, which one am I missing? One, oh, I'm using all four. What if we did another strip of this piece, maybe? I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn as to what, oh, here, that's what I'll do. I've got this little bin that has some in it. Yeah, let's do that. So let's cut about um, an inch strip. So if I put this in here, that there, I think we need still need something else. What if we did another layer here? And of course, everything needs distress inks put around it, I think. I'm just talking it out because I made one earlier, but I'm really trying to use some of the scraps I already had here to figure out what's the best look. Would it be better to just completely matte this one? The one I made earlier, I didn't do that. But no, I think I think I like the partial matte. So you know what? I'm just gonna take this piece and we're gonna cut it in half. So let's see what the measurement is. It is five and a half inches, so I'm just gonna cut it at two and a half. That made my decision for me, so I didn't fret about it. And I think that's what I'm gonna start doing is layering this up. All right, so let's put some distress inks around all the pieces and then see how it transforms the card and then we'll glue it all together. I re-inked my ink pad just before I started using it and it's really fresh and dark when the ink is right on top. And I like that in this case because it helps give a little bit deeper uh, edge to it and it's almost like it's got another layer with it but it's really just the ink all the pieces have been inked all right let's start building this back up and then see if there's other decoration that we need to make to it i'm just going to use a lean tacky glue i put just a little bit of water in mine to thin it and i use this really small point so i don't have to put a lot of glue on here it looks like it's a lot but it's really not it's a really thin 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 amount but what i like to do is take my bone folder and just kind of marry these together by smooshing it out it thins out that glue a little bit and what i like about aline's is it's clear when it dries all right, so I like that piece. So what if we put this piece? So now how that contrasts better since I put the distress inks on the edges. I'll put it, let's put it right about in here. I'll go ahead and glue these two pieces together. That way they're ready and I don't have to stop. Okay, that's going to go in here, but I know I want to change the layering. So let's put the pen nib on top of the book page. I put the book page right side up only because you could see the words. You know, these are going uh, sideways, so I didn't really worry about those too much, but I wanted to have it pseudo readable. All right, so that's going to go in here. So I want this piece to go on here. Yeah, so I'll just glue, I'll put my fingers where I need to stop, and I'll just put glue on this section here and glue it to that little rectangle piece, and then I'll be able to glue the whole unit down and not uh, get it off my element too far or messed up. Okay, I like that. So we're going to put that right in here. And I'm trying, I think I need to put this piece down first and this piece. Okay, so again, I'm going to do the same thing where I just bring it to the edge and I'll glue this piece to that piece. See there? 
So now I have that whole unit that I can just glue down. All right, so we're going to put this guy, and then this guy's going to go over the top. So this, using the book pages, they're so thin that even though I have so many layers here, it's not going to be super thick in a journal card. Or if you want to mail this in your envelope. All right, on this one, I think I'm going to put where it's kind of overlapping this piece and this piece right there. And then I thought, this is from the Curly Swirly set. There's a set of four little swirly stamps. And I thought, if I put this right here, that would look kind of neat. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you like what I created? Is that a fun card? And, you know, it may take a little bit to get your papers prepped, like stamping on top of them like I did. But now I have this whole stack of papers that I can sit here and pull some and then just pick up a couple of different stamps and make different types. Here's one that I made earlier and you can see the difference in my distress ink. Earlier my ink pad was somewhat dry so it didn't come out as dark but it's also pretty. I like both in the contrast that they have there. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a, a thumbs up. Know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time where I show putting the journal cards in a journal and making a journal. On Thursdays, I usually have what I call a live premiere. It's a recorded video that you could come and hang out with me and lots of others in the chat while you watch my video creating. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Check the description box for links. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'd love to be able to help you out if you have a question. And of course, follow me on Instagram and my uh, fan page on Facebook. Y'all take care. Bye.